Welcome to the Crime Redefined podcast produced by Zero Cliff Media. Coming to you from the U.S. Bank Tower, high above downtown Los Angeles. In our podcast, we drill deep into forensics and criminal investigation from the viewpoint of the defense, as well as explore the intersection of the media and the justice system. Thanks so much for listening to Crime Redefined. This is co-host Mayhul Angeria. We hope you enjoyed part one of our interview with Terrence Wood Sr. Now we present the conclusion of this gripping interview. Let's hope that Terrence gets some good news about his son very soon. Yeah, it seems like basic investigation would have been to figure out were multiple keys to Terrence's hotel room given out? And, you know, was there a surveillance camera? There probably was. I don't know what kind of hotel room it is, but that's just investigation one that's on one. one. Yeah. Think, there we go. You said the same thing at the same time. Come on. First thing is, let's see the cameras for from the day he came until the day that morning when he allegedly left to go wherever. Let's see them cameras. Let's just give it up. Come on, so, man. That's, that's first. That's elementary. Yeah. Something else that was put out there was this assertion that the night before he went missing, that Terrence, I guess, was out at a bar or a restaurant, met a young lady, and exchanged numbers. Do you think that even happened? And is that something, I mean, if it did, that should have been followed up on that. It's, again, is key. But I would assume that there's been no further follow-up on that. First of all, you know what I'm saying? My son is very, very private. You got to be close, close to him. You know what I'm saying? And he's, but when he's close to you, when he's with his friends, they have fun. But as far as now, he's with a bunch of people. And now he sees this young lady or whoever, and he tries to rap there and give a number. Okay, well, who's the young lady? This, mis- this mysterious person now. Mysterious person. Anything pertaining to who he's seen or somebody that came in contact with, we can't find out who they are, though. Yeah, or is it just another? Uh, is it another ruse put out there to suggest that yes, he was in the area? I mean, we just don't know. You know, right? Well, I was going to ask know? you. I was going to ask you a question, but this is something more I want you to comment on. Okay, so obviously, and you talked about this already, that there's one theory that Terrence wanted to fall off the grid or ghost himself. Whether or not that's even possible in the terrain and all of that, I mean. As you thought about this over the months, is there any reason whatsoever Terrence would have to want to disappear? No. My son have a very good life. That's just like originally I told him when he told me he wanted he was going to do this last shoot. I said, man, you really shouldn't go. He said, Dad, I really don't want to go. He said, but I already committed myself. So I said, Dad, all right, well, since you feel you committed yourself, one, outside of him going to school, my son, I gave both of my sons. My son, I did, matter of fact, just two weeks ago, I wound up putting his car in the shop because it sat been sitting for the last two and a half years. I gave my son a RT Hemi. Sunroof fully loaded. Nice. Paid for. Paid for. In my son's bedroom, I've seen pictures. He has a 56 inch flat screen screen TV, a fireplace, you know, oak wood, the stuff he likes, and him and his brother's bathroom. They got a jacuzzi, flat screen TV on the wall, you know, the marble sink. That's their bathroom. You know, in our house, they have, in the office, in our office in the house, they have a elliptical, punch and bag, weights, everything. You know, we live a very, very, very comfortable life. And the thing is this, even by my son not working, he ain't have to pay no bills. So money, it wasn't like, man, you got to go get a job, man. You got to go get a job. Sad to say, I still buy my kids, and my kids are grown. And I have female friends that will be like, you know, you still buy clothes for your kids? You still cook food for them? Those are my kids. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, no, they a hard life. Not a hard life at all. That's like my youngest son. Gave him a vehicle. He wanted a new vehicle. He traded in. I said, well, that's your car, though. No. He's still living home, though. You know? he In a very comfortable house. You know, he don't even have to. He's on one end. I'm on another end. When he come upstairs, he don't even have to see me. He have his own bathroom and everything. So, no, they live a very comfortable life. So it sounds like there's absolutely no reason that he'd want to, you know, fall off the no grid reason. for any reason. It sounds like he's got a really, like, you're a fantastic father. You know, and he's got a great life. And see, that's the thing. If you speak to his friends, I don't know if you spoke to Rochelle and all of them. No. You know, if you speak to his 
friends did with friend friends of his that knew him from London. Man, man, he have a, he always had fun, man. He always told me, can't wait to go home with his dad. You know, I can send you pictures, me and him, when he was home, me and him hang out. Every Tuesday, me and him sit in the room. He come to my room, sit in, the, sit in the chair in my room, in the recliner. I fall asleep. He watching, uh, we would watch, uh, uh, what's this show called? Uh, the Purge. We watch that. You know what I'm saying? Or I would come in, he come to my room. I fall asleep. Or he go in his brother. As soon as his brother get home from work, he in his brother's room. They downstairs. They, they cousin come over. They downstairs playing Monopoly together. You know what I'm saying? Christmas time, me and him, we go downstairs, he put up the Christmas tree. You know what I'm saying? So, man, the 4th of July, he came home, 4th of July, 2018. That was the first 4th of July. He was home in seven years since he moved away to go to school. He came, finally came home. When he came home June 29th, he was home. He mailed all the stuff here. I paid for all the stuff to come home. 4th of July, we had our big 4th of July. They run around the house. Him, his cousin with the water guns. I'm on the grill. You know what I'm saying? We, we had fun. We had fun. All right, then let's let, let's move. Let's put that theory aside. Then, so what I want to get into, I've got a couple of questions, and I want to get into okay. like just the, the rumor type stuff. No, and I want to like I'm, make I want I want to make sure our audience can put this the nonsense aside because there's so many, like you said, there's so many people that didn't even talk to you writing stories, and so I want to right. get it from from you. So, what is your best theory on what happened to him, and then has it changed over the last three years? My best theory is. Okay, when Simon told me this, he said, when I spoke to your son, he said he was highly recommended. And over the phone, when I spoke to him, he said, I knew we had the right person. He said, then when I met your son, he said, all that went out the door. Okay, great. So now, when you spoke to my son, when you speak to my son, my son speak well. I mean, he would get on me sometimes, Dad, you don't say that with Dad. You don't, do, you know, I spoke, my son speak very, very, very proper. Can, can, I want to stop you there. I want to, can I, I want to ask you a question. Something just popped up. So okay. did Simon, do you know if Simon ever saw your son before he spoke to him? No, that's the, that's what I'm dwelling on. That's what I'm speaking on now. So he never saw, so he spoke. never saw him. It was just phone calls no, until he they, actually showed up on set through, in Montana. Um, you know, emails, through emails, emails, you know what I'm saying? And phone conversation. That's the, that's the point I'm making. So I so you asked that, and that's where I was going. That's the road I was going down. So you just spoke to him. Speaks proper. You know what I'm saying? He was highly um, uh, recommended. You know, man. Now this person come and get off. Uh, you meet at the airport. This is a person of color. Yeah, that's wow. actually what popped up, that, that he wow. hadn't talked to him and no one ever said, and you probably, wow. if you lived this, in this England for a while... Home, yeah, right. had a, had when, a little bit of a British accent or something, and right. he didn't sound like he would thought. And then when he saw him get off the plane, he, he's yeah, like, he's a, he's a person of he's yeah, this color. dark and yeah. in person, as you yeah. all say. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. He's highly recommended. And then when you check his his portfolio, man, he graduated from University of Maryland. He got a double master's degree from Richmond College in London. He has this. He has this portfolio. Man, wow. But then. You see this person, your whole crew, your whole staff, all of you are white people. Now you see this here young black man, and now you tell me when he was there, I told sent him to the store to get me some fruit, and he couldn't even get the right fruit for me. What the hell? He didn't come here to be your maid. So let me so let me answer the question mouth. again. What do you what do you think happened then? I think I think I think that something was going on. My, my son wasn't really feeling it. He wasn't really going for it. And if they said he said he wanted to leave, he told them, my mother's having a surgery, thinking they would say, okay, you can leave on the airport. When they told me, he told them on Thursday, his mother was having surgery Saturday, but they couldn't get him a flight until next Wednesday. But when I got there, it was before when it was no snow on the ground, was no bad weather like that. So why would he have to wait from Thursday to Wednesday? I still haven't seen no canceled flight ticket, nothing from the airport saying it was even a flight there for him. This is all, once again, word of mouth, that what you all are telling me took place. 
So you think there was like maybe a fight or that got out of hand or something? I think maybe somebody wanted him to do something that he didn't want to do. Maybe he seen he saw something that he should not have seen, and they was afraid he wasn't one of the guys, one of the people, one of the crew, and he would say something about it. And maybe he could have been pushed, shoved, and it got on the hand, and something went wrong, and went totally left field, and they had to clean it up. Yeah, there's a there's a risk to I that because to God, if these guys yeah. are all British nationals, the last thing they want to do is get into an American court system. You all out. You you got all of them out of here. You know, I want to ask you yeah. something because uh, uh, there was a. Uh, I, I remember the interview that I the, the podcast interview, and that was then. And this is obviously three years, almost three years later, two and a half years later. Have you have you gone to the location where he physically went missing yet? No. Okay. To be um, honest with you. Only way I will go to Idaho, I have to have a bunch of family members and a bunch of people with me. I will not go to that place by myself or just me and my ex-wife if you paid the ticket and put me in the best hotel out there. Because I'm not going to disappear like that. No, no, I, I can, can't say that. Blame you. <laughs> right. I want to, in, in the, uh, so there's no way of you knowing. I want to ask something that stuck out to me watching the, the Dr. Phil. So they showed a, a number of photographs of the area in the pen in mind, right? Yeah. And then one of the uh, areas, one one of the images that they kept showing a number of times. I we actually have the the video of it uh, of the show, and they kept showing um, a, a cliff. Like they didn't actually say this was it, but they kept showing something that had a drop off. Is there any way? Did your did your investigate? Have two questions. Did your investigator go up to the location physically to the location? He told me he did. I don't have no proof of that. Is there any way that you so you, can you? Is there a way to follow up and see if the look the the photograph that they kept showing in the Doctor Phil that looked like a kind of a cliff is actually the area where he went missing? And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm familiar with this area, and it is heavily heavily forested. I mean, it's yeah. it's like if someone takes off within three or four minutes they're they're going to be into the woods and you're not going to be able to see them but the photograph that they kept showing if you go back and you look at it it's it's bald looking like it had been clear cut and so if it had been clear cut then someone could run down that hill and you'd be able to see him for miles right or at least not sure. miles but at least three see him for three or four hundred yards if there's no trees to obstruct your view so i'm sure. i want to know if that that photograph that they kept using for the the so-called, you know, cliff was actually the the actual photograph from the area where he went went missing. Because I keep hearing this term, this phrase, he ran down a cliff. And to my knowledge, you cannot run down a cliff. And anything probably over, you know, eight feet, you're going to twist, if not break your ankles. So I'm but trying to figure out. They, just, they say, and also, sorry to cut you off, they said it was no. a 70 degree angle cliff. Well, that's almost that's vertical. So you can't still you still you can't on, run man. down that you know Come, exactly a seventy degree angle cliff and let's put this on the on the plate too at night. Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay. So, I, okay. I, I, my son was never there, man. Yeah, that's it's the thing. Is that that's uh, cool? That's Whatever the, took place, it took place. First of all, and then this, I'm gonna jump backwards then too forward. He allegedly disappeared on the 5th. I didn't get a call to 7.20 on the 6th. That's new. We didn't know that. Yes. You know, Terrence, as you lay this out, this is so bizarre and mysterious, if, if you believe a lot of this, that you would almost have to believe that Terrence was abducted by UFO to buy this story. I mean, it almost I had mean, that it, sort of ring oh, so you. So you must... I read the story that they said he was adopted by aliens. You, did no, you I didn't. Read no, no, we didn't. The story. Oh, I thought you. I thought you'd being sarcastic. Yeah, that's out there too. Oh wow. Yeah, that's out there too. So the the last person to to supposedly air, air quotes here to see and to speak and see Terrence was Cherie, right? And have have you? I think you already answered this. Have you or your investigator spoken with her directly? Who's Cherie? Cherie, the uh, transportation, local transportation. She was supposed to oh, the last yeah, person. Oh, yeah, that's the lady that he was supposed to be talking yeah. to her. Yeah. And he was telling her how badly he's treated right. his family. 
Right. Now, I don't know you from a can of paint. Just met you. And now I'm going to sit. And, and then they said, first they said he was having a nice, con and she said he was having a nice conversation and everything. Then he said he had to go relieve himself. And that's when he leaped off the cliff. But before y'all put him leaping off the cliff, let's put this story out here. He said he mistreated by his family. This, that, never. So we already built up BS to cover up what, what took place. It's like you built up this story, this hype story, which is one woman that I've never spoken to, don't know from a can of paint. And now, after she said he was talking to her and they was together all day that day, and then he was telling her all this, now all of a sudden he had to relieve himself and go leap off the cliff. Wow. And you so say your investigator never followed up with her? Man, this guy took money and he told me he spoke to her. Never gave me anything in detail in writing. I mean, I don't have all I had was money taken out of my account. I don't have the so-called pictures I paid for, documenting a phone conversation, another thing. Let's rewind. They said, Did you did you see where the guy was talking? The guy that lived in the woods, and that's the guy who house they went to. Yeah, yeah, the guy okay, that, so, it, it, that's the eight, is that the uh, the guy that lives, if I remember correctly, kind of at the top of the hill, he was retired uh, government law enforcement, like ATF Jordan, or something oh, yeah, like that? No, and they, they went to his house. Right. That's the house they went to originally. Right. So they said, they said that they went to his house because now, this is a professional company, uh, what you call it, gold mine, whatever the name is, you all are out, you, this is what y'all do, this is what you do, y'all go in the woods all the time. Right. You all don't have your own satellite phone? Come on, okay. Really? Really? But so y'all say they didn't have a satellite phone. So they had to go to this person's house. They had the satellite phone. And this person is the one that was called the 911 and made the accusations of my son being dark reflection and all this. Why would I knock on your door right now and we in a country where we all speak the same language. And how can you, you let me in your house, sir, it's an emergency. Why would you interpret what I'm saying, telling the police of what happened, and you weren't there? I knocked your, your door to use the phone, so I have an emergency. Here's the phone. Now, I'm going to tell them X, Y, and Z. Why would you now say, no, that was the man who lived in the house, and he was the one telling the story? So what you're, tell the story? I just want to clarify something real quick. So what you're saying is if, if they didn't have a satellite phone, this guy did, which makes sense because of the rope moteness. There's no towers out there. So why wouldn't the guy, the ATF or whatever he was that was retired, just hand Simon or someone from the crew the phone and let them say what happened? It's, what you're saying is it sounds like they just fed him what had happened and he was relaying what they said. So there's, I don't well, think that's, that... That's what they want us to believe. Right. You know, which, how, why would that make sense? Like I said... We all speak the same language, so it's not like... No, you would say, hey, can I use your phone? There's been an emergency, right? Right. Isn't it, you, we, we don't need an interpreter. So right, right, right. It's right. an emergency, sir. Okay. Right. Oh, Here's my phone, of course. Our crew member fell off a cliff yeah. around. Then you get the phone, 911. Hey, yes, 911. Uh, one of our crew member, blah, 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 blah. Then, okay, but you say this person, you knocked on his door. But now, if you also read and you also heard what the person said, he said when they came to his house... He said immediately he called one of his friends of whom and went back to the area. They said it was a red ribbon somewhere on a tree where it happened. He said when he got there, he said ain't nowhere in the world he came down there. He said, I was out in my tent. He said, I sleep out in my tent. He said, no one came through here that night. That's what he said. Terrence, you said something very briefly, and it was very interesting on the Dr. Phil interview. And again, there was no real follow-up. But I believe you said that you learned from an investigator that there was a professional basketball player staying in the area where, where Terrence disappeared. Yes. And then yes. something Which happened to where his sons then had to have counseling. Um, can you break yes. that down a little bit more? So this is the second private investigator who was, once we found out he was working with the sheriff department, he called... He called me. That's how I found out who he was. I don't know. He Okay, he got my number and stuff off there. He said, you know, I'm private investigator. I can get any information. So this is how I got your information. Okay, fine. So then he's telling me, man, I know about this case. I've been out there. He said, you know, it was two professional basketball players. It was 
two people out there whose father is a professional basketball player. They were there as well. He said, one of the young men, after what took place out there, he's now getting counseling. Never once up to the second, I don't have this young man's name. But I say that to say, no one mentioned anything about no other two people being there that were from, this, from, from here or about no basketball player. None of that's mentioned in nothing. None of that's mentioned in no paperwork. So, so you know. Yeah, and, and along those lines, what do you make of the other lady who went missing the same day that Terrence went missing? Um, the sheriff's department was very quick to say that there's no connection between the two. Um, we can maybe read between the lines as to why they might say that based on what you said, but, but what are your thoughts on that? Okay, well, that lady went missing the same day. They said, what, 15, 20 miles away from where he was, her and her dog. They found a dog, never found a lady. Okay, that's her. You know, it was another young man. The young man, they went missing, and they said him and his friend drove the car in a lake. And when his father got out there and went to the lake, the lake wasn't taped off or nothing, and they still haven't found him. Now, the woman that went missing was also a man that went missing, but they allegedly found him, the so-called man. But now, do you remember when that was said to the sheriff? And Dr. Phil asked the sheriff, do a lot of people go missing in your town? The sheriff quote said, it depends. If they're not from here, yeah, they go missing. That came out the sheriff's mouth. And then that's when he said, especially if you're from the city. That, that sounds ominous to me. That that sounds ominous. You know, that came out of the sheriff's mouth. He said, yeah, I'm not, to a I'm lot not of sure what to make of him. You know, I mean, really, I don't. You know, I, it's 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 hard. I'm trying to figure out like what would his motivation be, but at the same time, it, it doesn't seem like any of his answers or responses are clean. Do you remember when or oh, did you hear when I was on a talk show and a lady, Miss Judy, called the talk show? And she lived there in Idaho, and she said her, her nephew got killed in the store out there. The sheriff department, they shot him and killed him because they thought he was robbing the store, some, some um, Indian dude. And she said they killed him. And they said uh, he, she said her two daughters, the day that my son went missing, her two daughters was in town. And they said these big trucks came and went up in the mountain area and then left. Did you ever hear that story? No. You heard talk about that? No. Yeah. Yep. Miss Judy. I can send you her name, her phone number, everything. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. She said on well, so you didn't you didn't hear the radio show that I was on, um, Focus Bill, and she was on the air and she said, It's blood on the sheriff's hands. I know for a fact it's blood on his hands. My nephew was killed. If you pull up uh, Focus Bill when I was on that talk show and you hear the lady that live in Idaho. And she talk about it and say how her two daughters was there. And the day my son was missing, these two big trailers went up to the mountain and came back and left. Yep. So beyond the investigators, what other avenues have you been able to, to try to utilize to find Terrence? None. I've been trying to get in touch with the FBI. The FBI. We're going to have a field officer. We got to give the story to them. And then once they look over it, then the field officer, if they feel... And it's um, something they'll call you. I have four case, four case numbers that I called in four different times in the last two and a half years. I ain't hear from that field officer yet. <laughs> the local police sheriff department police up here. That's in Idaho. We can't get in touch with people in London. That's out of the country. Now, and then you ask me about his bank accounts and stuff. His bank accounts is London bank accounts. So I called and tried to get the information off his London bank accounts because they said they can't give me no information. And like I told the person, I can have all, everything, bank account number. I told the person that worked in the bank, I said, sir, my son is missing. I don't want to know the dollar amount in that account. One day, he said they paid him. So if they paid him, that money should have went in that account. Right. Two, I know that me and my father, we put money in his account. The day that he left, I know I gave him in cash just for his pocket, $150 in cash. I just want to know, no dollar amount if the account is empty. If money had been taken out of the account. Now, if you say from November 5th, 4th, 3rd, that account have not been touched. Okay, there's a dollar amount in there. Good, fine, cool. I know what I have to do to try to take care of that. But 
just leave me here to the tip of the water and say, no money's been taken out of that account. You know, but if I know money was supposed to be put in that account and you tell me there's a zero balance on that account, tell me the last time money was taken out of that account. Now. I don't care the dollar amount. Once again, the last time a withdrawal was on X, Y, and Z day. Yeah, that seems, okay, like a, cool. that seems like a vague enough inquiry that they should be able to handle coming Come directly on. from a family member in a publicized, you know, missing yeah. persons case. And so, like I said, I don't want to know the dollar amount, but I right. know it should be dollars in there. It should be dollars in there. The company said they paid him to that account, his London account. That money should be in there if they paid him. So just tell me, yes. No, so that, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, I'm not an investigator. You know what I'm saying? I have very good common sense. And right. certain things are like one-on-one. Yeah. Hey, man, check his bank accounts. Next thing I asked the um, private investigator to do, flag his, flag his passport. See if it's moving on his passport. Private investigator never got me that information. I asked the sheriff department. I told the FBI about it. Flag his passport. Any movement on that passport? Because if he's out the country, whatever, see if it's moving on that passport. Right. And then I'm going to just throw this out there. You say he had to fake. He goes somewhere he'd never been before. He wants to get off the grid. So he go out there and run through woods, blah, blah, blah. He has a passport. He's been to Africa. He's been to Rome. If he want to disappear, just stand up here. If you disappear, you need some type of money or plan to disappear. So I'm not going to go in somewhere I don't know, freak, or leap off a cliff, have a nervous breakdown this morning, whatever, whatever, to do all that. And like I said, just going back from the start, let's not even get to the finish line. Go to the start. If you're at work right now and you're having some abnormal reactions or you're going through some, your company, which is your company's responsibility that you're on the clock at that company, is to seek for medical assistance. I should hope so. You know? So he had this mental breakdown and you all detained him, not restrained, but detained. And now after he allegedly got himself together, now you still allow him to go to work. Now he's out there and he's acting strange. You say, get this battery, Terrence. They said he didn't know what battery to get. Get this shirt, Terrence. He didn't know what shirt to get. And finally, he tried to grab a drone out the sky. I said, Terrence, that could cut your fingers off. Pause, but not one time did you say, we immediately called for medical assistance. We immediately put him back in the truck, the van, the Jeep, and took him back to the hotel. Not once was that said. Terrence, I, I heard at one point that the sheriff's department basically got, got pissed at you because they thought you had made some kind of comment in an interview that essentially that they were racist. And racist. That was the reason. Yeah. Um, can you shed a little bit of light on you know, how, how they shut you down after they heard that? Uh, yes. We're going to rewind to the lady called Miss Judy. Miss Judy came on a radio station. Miss Judy said on a radio station, they are racist and it's blood on their hands. This lady from their town just said her nephew got, she said that on a radio station. Like I said, if you try to pull up Focus Bill and pull up the day that I was on the radio station, Terrence Woods, and listen to, listen to it. This lady called from, from Idaho. She's going off on them. She called them racist. Next thing I know, the sheriff said, I called him a racist. I never called you racist, sir. Somebody in your town called you that. Now, you put it out there that I called you a racist. Now these idiotic people that's making these face, fake stories up, taking negative piece of this, negative piece of that, and creating their own story, and never once spoke to me, never once spoke to his family, never once spoke to his friends, as with Fox 5, everything Fox 5, if you watch the whole six-part podcast, they speak of everything the sheriff said, everything Idaho said, everything the sheriff said, everything Idaho. They have nothing on a six-part podcast doing no interviews on his grandfather, his grandmother, his colleagues at school. When he went missing and the professor from the University of Maryland went on TV, the professor from University of Maryland on Channel 9 said, when Terrence walked in the room, the whole room lit up. I always wanted him in my room. 
anybody to speak about him that worked with him other than this hair crew here speak highly of him. But you don't see on none of those shows that say negative stuff, any of these little documentaries you see, nothing on there have anything with his family or his friends. Everything on there they dwell on is what Idaho, 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 Idaho said. Nothing they say. Oh, here go his friends. Even on Dr. Phil, he had Rochelle on there, friends on there. They had everything good to say about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they lit up when they Rochelle, talked about Rochelle, almost, she started crying almost. Yeah, yeah, that's right. She, she got in tears. She said, I don't care if I lose my job. You know? So these are people that he know. He stayed with. You know, one young lady, she's in the, in, in the like, she, I got him his job. I got him his first job. So these are people he know. But any of those negative stories out there, see if they have any of those people in their, in their story. Only people they have is what came from Idaho. There's not a story out there. Like I said, Dr. Phil did a little something, but he didn't do what he's supposed to do. But anyone have a story out there, you don't see none of those stories with, oh, we spoke to a family member. We spoke to a neighbor. We got paperwork and documentation from his doctor's office. Where's all that? But you're creating this here picture and image of this person that have two two Grammy Awards, three books out, 10 productions of his own, graduated at the top of his class, University of Maryland, got two master's degrees. And then, being that I'm bringing up the master's degree, even Simon said, they said he was in, in, in a little report, the police report, they said he's someone that never been in the woods before. He's green in the woods. That's in a police report of theirs. That he never been in the woods. Wow. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to paint a paint a narrative. I, I'm curious after um you you were on Dr. Phil, I was wondering if, if you start to receive any tips or if if there was any non-traditional tools, like if psychics start reaching out to you to shed some light on the mystery of, of what happened to them. I'm just wondering well, if yeah, over the I, over the I years if psychics reach reach out to me and people would say, well, you know, just give us air. Do you want to try this? And I, I just don't. That stuff, I, you know, a lot of that stuff, man, I got to the point where, you know, if you can't show me no credentials, man, and I was reluctant as hell to deal with you. Right. But it's like, I got to try to deal with somebody. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but just a Joe Blow. I mean, I get emails with people. Oh, we, we're this person. We're that person. And we could help you. And, uh, I don't even respond to some of this stuff, man. You know, because like I said, you put my son's name in there, you see a million stories. But how many stories? Yes. So, I mean, at this point, you know, what cards do you have left to play? I mean, you've, you went to the top, to the FBI. Um, is that, there any kind what, of... That's... Yeah, I was just going to say, is there any kind of like civil action, like a lawsuit that it's you could file that, to get that's more what information? I'm, I, I can't go into details with that, but... That's the avenue I'm looking up now because, like I said, if I go to work and I'm at work, my company have, while I'm working on the clock with them, they have a great deal of responsibility for my safety. This is a company that's doing shows. They have episodes of this, uh, such and such, what's his name, Dave, some gold mine. They have episodes of, they go all over the world doing this. And you're going to tell me a million-dollar operation, and it might be more than that, you're under Roar, which is under Discovery. You all are out in a wooded area doing it, and you all don't have no goddamn um, satellite phones. You don't have proper... Get out of here, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, I'll Come say on. this about as far as the production side goes. If when Terrence took the job, right, they offered it to him, and they... and that the the that franchise the gold rush is a huge franchise there's not too many people that that don't know what that is right. so he knew going in that it, where the locations were going to be so it doesn't make a difference of whether or not he you know the woods he 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 knew where he was going it's not like right. he didn't know so he would i'm sure as a, a seasons per, a season producer and a and a world traveler that he is he can handle going out to a, a place where at a little bit of elevation with with some trees so that just that, that just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Because he's been in places. I have pictures right. with him in wooded areas, and 
is the moose over there. Pictures with them, you know, right. with animals out there. You know what I'm saying? That you don't see in our neighborhood, as they said. Get out of here, man. You know, I want to ask you a question. Now that you've been through this or going through it, you've not been through it, but you're you're still going through it. If, what advice would you have to other families who are who are missing loved ones like this? What would you? What would be the one thing that they could take away? I mean, to be honest, and I was on a show and they asked the same exact question. I can't give you advice because I can't tell you how to deal with your feelings. And there's no advice to give to the unknown. Right. So you could pray for your children. You wish your children do well. As I told my son, if you don't feel comfortable, don't go. So your son could go to work right here, around the corner from you, in your same city, state, town. Your child, your son, daughter, and you pray they come home safe. You never in your wildest dreams think something like this is going to happen. So you give them a cell phone, you give them a cell phone. Tell them you call. Call me as soon as you get there. They call you as soon as they get there. And then they go blank. So it's no way, no way in the situation Nothing that you can I'm say. in. There's no way in the situation I'm in, I can tell you how to prepare for the unknown because this is the unknown, okay? Even if I got a call and they said something bad at my son, if a person die, I tell everybody this, when it comes to death, you have closure and healing. And if you believe in God, you pray to God that your loved one go visit him. You know, but you got closure, closure and healing. You put them in a casket, a box, however. But you know, something bad could have happened, but you have closure. I don't know right now, if I'm watching TV now and I see a show come on with somebody running through the woods, I will not watch it. If I see a show right now and have something to do with kidnapping, I do not watch it. I don't know if my son, and I pray that he's not, I don't know if he's in a cage somewhere. I don't know if my son is being tortured. You know what I'm saying? So I can't go to sleep every night and say, hey, I know he passed on and we had this here funeral, we had this service, we had this home going, and God is going to make it better, and he's with God. No, I can't say that. I can't say he's with God right now. He could be in the devil's den. And that's the part that hurt the most every day. I pull home in my driveway sometimes, and I just sit in my driveway, driveway because I don't want to come in the house yet. Because so much of my house, remind me of my, my son, both of my sons, there's pictures in my house as soon as you come in. You know what I'm saying? You go in the garage, they got their water guns in there, there's organ in there, this in there. You come upstairs, man, his bedroom's upstairs, the same way it was the day he left. Only thing get done in that room is it get dusted. Other than that, Nothing else get touched. I got his face tattooed on his on my arm. I got a portrait of him tattooed on my arm. Me and him have the same name. So anytime somebody say my name, they're saying his name. Family members would tell me, you got to be around more family, more family, because I shied away. We used to have all big family events in my house, like I said. My son and them put up the tree. I do all the cooking. We used to have a great time. But I said this to my family. I say this to people. Even co-workers and stuff now, it bothers me and I move away from a lot of people and shelter myself because I have co-workers and they talk about, man, you know, it's summertime and yeah, man, me and my boy, man, he's varsity and man, we playing, you know what I'm saying? Damn, I don't have that to say about my son right now. You know, and then when I go around family, you know, it's in a prayer, baby T is missed and you know, we miss baby T and we love him. But yet and still, y'all going home with y'all kids. Y'all going home with y'all daughters. Y'all going home with your family. Y'all can hug your family tonight. If I want, I look at my son's room and sit on his bed or sit in a chair. I don't have my son to hug tonight. I don't have my son to make funny faces with. I don't have my son to come in my room and, and, and sit in the recliner and watch me fall asleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like I said, even with death, if I know I close the box on him, right. then I know he's with God right? because he's a good person. But right now, like I said, if I see a show with some goddamn woods, or somebody kidnapping shit. I don't want to see that crap. I don't want to see that crap. You, you know, know you mean, yeah. You you mentioned like all the people that have reached out. You know, reach out to you. You know, a lot of nonsense and things like that. But part of the reason that we wanted to bring you on was to help get the word out. So I know how we came in contact with you. But is there anything you want to share with us right now on 
where if anybody has any information or wants to share it anonymously or whatever, how do how would they help help find your son? How would who would and where should they they contact you? If, if you anyone, want to mention that right now, if anyone have any information, you could contact me at t w o o d s zero one two nine dot b j b is in boy j is in joe seventeen at gmail dot com. That's my direct email address. Okay. That's great. We'll we'll make sure that we publicize that because you know what? Sometimes when time time passes and, and locals up there, they may have, you know, whatever reason, have a come to Jesus moment or something and 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 you know want to send an email or or do a call. We want to make sure that we have a way that they can get in, get in touch with you. Yeah. Well, Terrence, as we have followed your ordeal, we've just really been shocked and disappointed about the lack of developments. Um, you know, I think I told you that. We were looking into the story quite a bit about a year ago and, you know, looked recently and it seems like there's no updates. So, um, no. you know, one thing, Terrence, is, you know, we don't want your son to be known as as the, the guy who ran down the hill and disappeared. So just at the end here, we just want to kind of give you the floor. Um, you know, is there anything else that people should know about Terrence or about the case that, you know, maybe hasn't been put out there or anything else you want to set the record straight on? Yes. Terrence was a fun going person. He liked having fun. And like I said, if these people just putting his false information out, speak to his friends, speak to his family, not take bits and pieces of mess that other people are putting out there that didn't speak to his friends and family, you know, stop doing that. Stop doing that. That's not good. You know what I'm saying? That's not my son. These people don't even know my son. They're clueless of him. You know what I'm saying? So don't do that. My son, didn't jump off a cliff to kill himself, to disappear. Something happened to my son. And as the sheriff said out of, his, out of his own mouth, when the cadaver dogs got there, they did not smell a scent of my son. When the helicopters got there, they could not find no heat trace of my son. So, you know, even the man, the local man whose house they went to, said when him and his friends went back up there, he said, no way in the world my son could have went off that cliff. You know, but no one is dwelling, everybody, the people that's putting these little sidebar stories out, they're dwelling on stuff that they got from the sheriff department. The stuff that they got from people that made a story out of only what they got from a one-sided story. None of these stories say we spoke to his family, his friends, his school colleagues, his professors. Everything is what people I don't say, what people I don't say. How can you know a person if you've only been with him less than 24 hours? Right. That narrative gets out there and then people just kind of just recycle it over and over and over again. And then that becomes what happened. Right. You run with it. Right. And you're trying to tarnish a good young man's name and legacy over something you are clueless of to make a story, to think you're selling a story and you're selling nothing but, you know, lies and somebody that's out there. And I pray tonight, I pray every night that wherever my son is, I just hope God allow him to stay strong enough so we get him home. I don't think my son is gone as far as off the face of the earth. I think he's in a situation. Because like I said, rewinding real quick, you as an individual make a statement to me that my son had a mental breakdown and then say you had to detain him. Detain me and hold against your will. Restrain me to hold down if he had this so-called anxiety attack. What did y'all detain him? Something go wrong when y'all detained him? Come on. People, stop stop reading lies, people. You know, Terrence, it's, it's been really, really, really an, just incredible conversation. And I hear your passion. And I hope that if any, any, first of all, if there's anything that we can do or there's any new developments, you'll contact us right away and let us know how we how we can help and because we're, we're willing to do whatever we can on our end um to, to help out and spread the word or or referrals whatever the case is and i wish we had more time but it's absolutely been a pleasure speaking with you and we really appreciate you joining us today on uh, on crime and, and I, I deeply appreciate you having me i deeply appreciate that and i hope that this gets out and like you said someone may you call it a jesus moment a true moment Man, bow down and if you know something, man. Sooner or later, someone will. They always do. 
No, yeah, don't don't hide it. Because whatever happened to my son, wherever you are out there, it could happen to one of your family members. Wow. Really, really, really heartbreaking. Indeed. This, 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 this poor man is suffering perhaps more now than he was the day that uh, he got the news that uh, Terrence Jr. went missing. It's really hard to understand why this case hasn't gotten more attention and a proper investigation from our point of view. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's stuff out there. There's Dr. Phil, but, you know, I don't know. You expect maybe some celebrities would jump on this, some bigger organizations. But, you know, it hasn't happened. And I'm really shocked at how Terrence Sr. has essentially been re-victimized in this process. I mean, from the way he describes it, he's been mistreated by Terrence's coworkers who were on the set, um, the sheriff's department, the media, and even the investigators that he hired that were supposed to be on his side. Yeah, that was hard so, to listen to. Yeah, so what, why is this such an uphill climb? And, you know, I, you, you probably have to take into consideration some topics that some people don't want to talk about. What about the power and influence of Hollywood? And what about the, the potential role of race in all of this? So on this podcast, we talk a lot about wrongful convictions and, you know, what are the root causes of them? You know, whether it's lousy investigation, maybe out-and-out -out bias or corruption. And listening to, to Terrence's interview, you can see how there's at least a potential for that type of injustice in the way that his son's case is being handled, primarily by the things that aren't being done, you know, by the just the suppositions that are left out there without that kind of hard evidence. He's get, he definitely has a good argument for that, um, just based on what he told us and, and what we've seen in the media on our own. No doubt. But uh, let's be clear, we're not experts on the Terrence, Terrence's disappearance. It's something that we are now striving for. And we certainly want to hear all sides of the issue. But on balance, it seems like the media is just going with the status quo of what the sheriff's department and the production company had to say. Yeah, like you say, I think uh, talking to Terrence is part of our evolution in becoming an expert on this. I mean, you, you have to go to the source. That's number one. And, and again, drawing a parallel to criminal investigation. Um, and status quo of what maybe what law enforcement found. I mean, if you read in any one of my cases, you know, you read the police reports, you would say, oh, geez, case closed. I mean, this sounds bad for the defendant, right? Well, of course, otherwise he right. wouldn't be incarcerated. Charger. Right. But right. but we don't take that as gospel. Right. Uh, and because there has to be, you know, you go to a doctor, you get a second opinion, right? So these things need to be independently investigated. Not that it's all completely wrong, but investigations are complicated did you look at alternate explanations did you follow every thread did you look at this piece of evidence well wait a minute the results in this analysis are you sure about that is there something else that that could mean um so none of that has happened here yet so we really don't have an investigation or like we said facts that have been mutually agreed on you know, I agree. And I, I mean, I don't, can you really use the word even investigate at this point? I mean, you have <laughs> right, to wonder right. with the private investigators Terrence had were simply subpar, inept, or did they just meet with abnormally high resistance due to the nature of the case and, and potentially the location? It was uh, very interesting how Terrence Sr. described the small town in Idaho, how everyone instantly knew who he was. That was a little, you know, little twilight zone -ish. that that was twilight zone and creepy for sure and then you start thinking about if there is a cover-up conspiracy you know uh, th this kind of environment maybe is is the best place for that you know but again because it is that type of environment that that doesn't mean it happened but i, I think terrence's best private investigator was actually that employee at the police department who surreptitiously gave him the copy of the 911 call I mean, it seems like that's the only hard piece of evidence right. that Terrence really has. And that was, you know, kind of ill-gotten, actually. But, you know, there's still a lot that can be done here. So, for one, you there's know, tons. Terrence... I'm, I mean, yeah. it, 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 not, like I said, is you can, can you really even say that this has been investigated yet? I mean, it's just, it's almost like, at minimum, just day two of an investigation, even though we're almost three years later. Yeah, which is sad because, you know, the old thing about 48 hours, it's that's like... Right trail goes cold uh, but having said that there's still a lot that can be done so i think you know terrence needs some muscle on his side but by that i mean probably like a pit bull attorney who can really get in there and make things happen and it sounds like he made some reference to that there's something in the works 
because I don't know what could be done in the civil, you know, we, we talk about FOIA, you know, information release, and is, is there something civilly that can be done? But, you know, he, man, he just needs an investigator just to do the basics as well. Uh, that's really sad that he had a bad experience. And, and I see that too in the criminal investigation world. And man, th those investigators, they are key pieces because uh, they're the ones that collect the evidence, help get the experts, all of that. If they're no good, you can't get anywhere. And so, well, what do we have? Well, Terrence Sr. has Terrence's laptop. My gosh. Which is what huge. A, what a treasure trove of information could be in there. Um, even if that had been altered along the way, there's no doubt that, you know, a competent computer forensics experts could get in there and find out what manipulations have been made. Um, there's all kinds of metadata in there that even if things were deleted, there's still some kind of trace. Um, you know, what about maybe there's a record of his bank account. Dion, I think when we were talking, you were saying he might even have his login information right. stored on that computer or there may be a way to get it. So that's probably number one. Well, how about this? What if Terrence had an iPhone? And if you connect your iPhone like to your iPad or your laptop or something like that, you might even it's see there. your phone messages That's right. on your laptop as well. So I think the possibilities are endless. Also, you, t you talk to Terrence a lot with the camera. And yeah, you're right. There's the basics of just what are the dates of the photographs. But there's all kinds of metadata in any kind of digital evidence that could be looked at, you know, including on the camera. So those are definitely two good starting points. And again, just somebody to lean on people to try to get some of this investigative material. And, and what are the all the legalities here if the case is open, if the case is closed? You know, can can the sheriff's hand be forced, basically? Well, I think the, the key phrase you mentioned a couple of times is just the basics. I don't even feel, <laughs> based on what I've read and heard from Terrence Sr., that even the basics have been met. Yeah, yeah there was the initial search in the area, but I mean, you, you got to spiral out from there, right? So you, you've checked that box. Okay, we searched the area, but then you got to start working backwards. And you, right. you know this, right? And well, I don't so, mean, it doesn't seem like that's been done. No, so I mean, like, again, like I said earlier, you know, what are all the reasons that maybe you, you wouldn't detect Terrence? You know, one is that he was never there, you know? Right. So, I mean, how, how do you look at that analytically and say, well, it could have been because of this, that, the other. But I mean, certainly... Um, Again, tunnel vision, I think, and then, oh, what's to Yeah, I, I do remember the sheriff. Uh, there was another incident in Idaho where I, I think some kids, they flipped their yeah, SUV flipped the rig into, into a river. river. Yeah. yeah. And uh, again, there was some discussion about how poorly the family was treated. And I remember that there was a quote from the sheriff. It's like, oh, the river will spit them out eventually. It's like, uh, you know, this is, this is 2021. You know, it's like, we, we don't do that. We don't let things, you know, just become mysteries. We we have the technology now. Yeah, it, it definitely. It was hard to to when listening to his interviews. It it was hard to determine whether or not he was just flippant about it. And city folks come up here, and bad things happen, and yeah. they kind of get what they deserve, right. or actually being resistant to doing a real investigation. For me, I, I I still don't have. I haven't made up my mind on that. You know. Agreed. Just just. It's crazy. So at this point, we, we just have no idea what types of resistance and motivations are out there against having the truth come out. Hopefully, we'll learn that soon. So let's hope that these uh, crime redefined episodes will will make a difference and and really have an impact on this on finding Terrence. Yes, our wonderful listeners, please please contact Mr. Woods with any information you might have, and you know please share this episode with people who you think might be interested in it or know something about some of the areas we've talked about. And so let me repeat um, Mr. Woods email address because it's a little tricky. twoods 129bj 17 at gmail.com. And also there's a GoFundMe page out there called Find My Missing Son, Terrence Woods. Terrence Woods Sr. has a Facebook page that's very easy to find. There is a Twitter account. Uh, the handle is at Find Terrence Woods. Uh, the Woods is abbreviated WDS, so at Find Terrence WDS. And there's also an Instagram account at Find Terrence Woods. 
So hit up all those sites, make a contact donation. One of them, contact us. You know, yeah. if you've got information, that's we'll right. Pass it along. We're and, easy to find. Yeah, come on, get, let's see what we can do. So we really hope that this episode is helpful to the Woods family. We we really do. And thanks so much to all of our awesome listeners and social media connections. We would love to hear your feedback on this episode, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Crime Redefined. Thank you for listening to the Crime Redefined podcast. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Crime Redefined. Please send us your comments and questions and join us for the next episode.